Hello, Matthew. Uh, we're going to talk about something new and exciting, and I'm thinking about the computer game that is based on one of the most favorite, if not the favorite, uh, mind book or book of readers of uh, Leopold Tillman, that is uh, the evil one, Zwe. Mm, do you think that is something good in uh, translating literature into computer games? Uh, and it can work from the financial perspective as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think that of uh, all of my father's books, certainly this is the most, uh, it lends itself to this form, uh, to all sorts of uh, uh, live action formats, movie, animation, uh, live action movie, and video game. The, the plot, the action, the setting, uh, the dramatic nature of the storyline all uh, makes for uh, an interesting game uh, with different characters. The characters in the book are very interesting and action oriented. They're not just, you know, plotting their way like a Jane Austen novel for relationships, but there's a lot of action. Uh, and of course, the setting is fascinating. Warsaw in the 1950s, you know, one one decade, 10 years on after the leveling city uh, during the end of uh, World War II and the ruins that a, the people of the capital have to navigate through, uh, the hooliganism, the you know communism having set in, the militia and the military police trying to keep order in a city that is incredibly still disorganized. Communism did not make for great order. Uh, so it just it lends itself really well and it comes from a, a great culture of both video gaming and literature. I mean, we looked at what happened with, uh, with The Witcher. Now that's obviously more of a, a mystical uh, science fiction uh, but there's a similar sort of action orientation in these plots, these characters, these devices, and these histographies. So I think it's uh, perfectly set up to be a great game and, and later uh, movie as well. Uh, are you a player as well? I, a little bit. Uh, I'm not, you know, an obsessive gamer the way many are, but I've played, uh, you know, many different types of games over the years. I've played a decent amount of Call of Duty with friends uh, to uh, let off some steam. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? Uh, and Halo back in the day, that might be before your time. But, uh, and, you know, I grew up uh, with uh, Nintendo and Sega Genesis and PlayStation and playing some of these games. And then more recently, uh, I have played The Witcher and I've played uh, uh, Red Dead Redemption, which is one of my favorite games. And that one, I think, is very uh, similar in terms of it plays like a, a book or a movie. And given the choices, the narrative and the plot devices, uh, I think Zwi uh, the evil one, uh, the man with the white eyes, the one we're working on. I think it could look a lot like that in terms of having different mm -hmm. uh, choices to make, different outcomes uh, in sort of a plot tree, uh, decision tree. Uh, of And then for those who would watch those playing the game, it could look like a movie. I mean, that's one of the things I saw with Red Dead Redemption was that it almost looked like you were watching a movie when watching other people play it, which I found really interesting. And I think this this one, our uh, our opportunity here to to uh, to produce this might have some similarities. Yes, the EV one is similar to Wild West or DC Universe when you have a classical evil versus a good clash and moral background. Uh, but you are also an investor in Wall Street and you're still an active investor. What would you say about translating literature into the computer games from that perspective? Is it worth, uh, is it, worth it or is it a good business opportunity? Well, uh, uh, certainly, yes. Video gaming is going uh, uh, up into the right, as we say. The market is growing uh, and the of the producers are growing commensurately, uh, creates huge economic opportunity. Poland is a leader uh, in video game development, given the tech savvy nature of the workforce, uh, as well as the, uh, the structural labor economics. Uh, and, uh, you know, obviously there's uh, some real world leaders in the sector like CD Projekt. And we won't have a similar issue with rights uh, as uh, The Witcher and uh, Andrzej Sapkowski had, uh, given that, you know, I'm happily aligned with the uh, with Red Deer Games and uh, the founders and uh, and the partners. Uh, so I, we won't have some of that similar drama, which is uh, which is nice. Uh, but I do think it's a, a very, very good opportunity. And this will continue to grow the Polish video gaming ecosystem uh, in the marketplace globally. And two last questions. Uh, first, 
Mm, how do you think this game uh, would be would be seen from the other side of the Atlantic? You live in in United States. Uh, you were born there. Do you think it will be um, something interesting for uh, an audience uh, that is not maybe very familiar with the 50s in 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 the Eastern uh, Central Europe? Why do you think it's universal? Absolutely. Uh, again, it's there's action, there's drama, there's uh, pathos, there's interesting characters, uh, there's the battle of good and evil, which is truly universal. Uh, but the the setting is so interesting, and even though those in the West may not be so familiar with what happened in Warsaw at the end of World War II, and then as communism sort of set in behind the Iron Curtain, and especially in Poland, especially in Warsaw, given its sort of urban urban environment, uh, these things are are universal. And if it's done well, then it will attract attention. The Witcher, who knew about sort of the Polish uh, mythology? And the Central European mythology. Uh, the only thing people knew was uh, was you know Transylvania and Romania and and the the history of vampires with Dracula. But yet The Witcher took off so well and, and ended up becoming one of the top shows ever for science fiction and fantasy. Uh, so as long as it's done well and presented well and, and produced top notch, which I have full faith it will be, then I think it's a great opportunity as well to show this part of history. And it's not that far away. You know, 70 years ago, people in Poland and the U.S. were alive during World War II and the 1950s and remember this time on this side of the uh, the Atlantic. And then in the U.S., uh, you know, they can learn about it. It's not like it's it's so far removed from the experience uh, of people uh, in contemporary times that they can't empathize with it or understand it. So it'll be a great opportunity to teach them some history about this, about the Polish region, about uh, the post-war era, about Warsaw, et cetera. And the last question, uh, using the uh, possibility that I can speak with the child of Matthew Turman, what do you think would father would tell you if he knew, if he would be still alive about the concept of making a video game out of his book? Would, would, he, would he be excited about that? Yeah, absolutely. He, uh, he, when he came to the West, he came to the USA, he was very, very uh, interested and enamored with pop culture. What he didn't like was the cultural degradation uh, in the culture war between the right and the left. And he always said that, uh, you know, the right, the conservatives needed to fight back and take back culture and produce great things in culture. And this is a great opportunity to do so. Uh, so if anything, he'd be not just a proponent of the media, the video gaming and the, the opportunity it affords to, to teach and create, but also uh, to uh, bridge the divide in the culture war and to uh, show that, you know, the, the great literature, his great literature uh, can be transposed and could be informative. Uh, and I think he would be hugely in favor of using his literature into these new mediums like video gaming to uh, to, to help uh, teach culture and help win the culture war, the battle of ideas, help inform about communism, for instance. You know, the game is done well. You'll get a feeling about what it was like to be behind the Iron Curtain and part of the the, the roles of the characters in this, uh, especially the bad characters, uh, will be part of coming from this sort of communist fabric. And so that'll be instructive and that'll be, if it's done well, hopefully impactful in the culture war writ large. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, I see that you're on the golf course, so we'll have a great game. Uh, and I think we are also keeping our fingers crossed for our game, both of us and not only both of us. So uh, let us see what will happen, but I'm sure that with your father's book and with uh, people around it with their ideas, we can create something truly uh, unique. And I really cannot uh, help myself to, to wonder how this game would look like, but I have only positive thoughts around that. Thank you very much, Matthew, for your time and see you uh, in, in consoles and, and PCs when it will be ready. Take care.